Hearts of Iron 4 was released on June 6, 2016, and it sold 200,000 copies after two weeks of a release, making it the most well-received product in the Paradox Grand Strategy Collection. This was due to a variety of things, mainly a large marketing campaign, an already dedicated fan base, a salvage reputation, and a good release of a previous game. Not to mention, it was released on the anniversary of the D-Day landings, which means a higher search volume for the World War II category. So in just brilliant marketing there. In this video, we will follow the timeline of Hoi 4 and the adjustments. It's made to stay relevant. When Hoi 4 first released, it was raw. And I mean raw. Like a raw dog and like Johnny Sins out here. It only had seven countries with actual content. But the freedom to choose any country you want was enough for most people. Achievements was a great idea because it kept people playing single player for hours. And if you had friends, you could play multiplayer. We'll look at the effects of that later. The game had a ton of problems. Like the AI was hot ass. Their divisions never had strength. And didn't know how to use their own air force. And Germany, for some reason, loved to justify in South America no matter what. Around this time, a very notable mod would be released, the Colored Buttons mod. They also added Hot Join for multiplayer and added Resync. And thus, multiplayer would be ignored forever again. Christmas time was coming near, and that meant an increase in sales would be coming soon. To capitalize on the increase in sales, Paradox would release the first Hoi 4 DLC together for victory. This DLC added focus trees for all the British Commonwealth. They also added Lend Lease, and War Score was now based off of battle instead of how much land you could snake to. It also fixed some incompetent AI stuff. The most notable change I could find in the patch notes was the, the Yemeni Merchant Navy getting a grand total of five convoys. <laughs> they also added voiceover sound effects for countries adding a relatability for the varying demographic the game appealed to. Around this time, a little unknown YouTuber would start to make videos making fun of how terrible the YouTube community was around Hoi 4. That YouTuber was named Isar Productions, who would undoubtedly change the scene forever. The cancer microphone, the 14 FPS, what a fever dream. Hello there, people of the internet. It's your good old buddy old pal here, Isaro's Productions. Uh, I tried going on to the Wayback Machine because Isaro deleted or unlisted most of his old videos. But look at that sub count, 9k when he uploaded this video. So he wasn't like technically unknown, but like the video did well. So in patch 1.4, they released its next DLC calling it Death or Dishonor. Um, I was looking at the ad for this and this has to be the worst ad I've ever seen. It's literally just a guy blinking, staring at a map. And that was their idea. This might be the most irrelevant DLC I've ever seen. Adding focus trees for the Czechs, Hungarians, Romanians, and Yugoslavians. They fixed the air screen so it doesn't look like this. During this release, Hearts of Iron Innovator and his iconic group of friends, Okoen 1, released this first Hoi 4 MP in a nutshell video. You want to talk about status quo? <laughs> I'm talking about status quo. I'm already in war. I'm already in war. This did extremely well, as the people he recorded with were over the top and not very good at the game, making it very relatable to his audience. His first video on Hoi did very well, and the trend during this time was to make a series. So he made a part two and a part three, and so on and so on. This series is still going strong and is probably my favorite reality TV show I want to keep up with. Also during this time, an immensely famous person now, the spiffing Brit started making videos on Hoi 4, nuking the entire world, pulling Kane into space, etc, etc. All of this true, authentic experiences on YouTube would help push Hoi 4's success. Hoi 4 was banned from China a month after release, and China's punishment for that was getting ignored for two years. They changed unity into stability and war support. All those Chinese nations got a focus tree except Manguko and Tibet. Is that a political statement? I don't know. For some reason, it also added alternative history for Japan and Germany. They also did the first major combat update. They made generals and admirals upgradable, giving the units they command certain traits, helping out the player fight the still incompetent AI. They also opened a new door in the multiplayer scene as people can become more strategic in their games. They also added the decisions mechanic, making the game a little more in-depth. Around this time, a Twitch streamer would step on to the YouTube stage named Tommy K. Tommy and his over the top acting would draw in a sizable audience were just starting out. And I am completely assuming this because I can't find any statistics for backing up what I just said other than the data gained uh, this year. Uh, this is also the part where I say shout out to Tommy's editor, Marconi, for kicking me out of the editing event he was hosting. 
uh, it gave me motivation, which is the only thing I really lack. Completely forgot to write this into the script, but uh, Kaiserite was released. That was very important because this is like the, one of the best mods of all time, aka the Man the Guns DLC, aka I think I'll shoot myself before I learn the f***ing naval system. This DLC added focus trees for the USA, the UK, Mexico, and the Netherlands. No other Benelux country, just the Netherlands. It added a ship designer, mines, the ability to refit your navy, uh, and more stuff to research with your limited research slots. And fuel. Boy. Now you don't have to buy oil to produce tanks. During this time though, the Hoi 4 section on YouTube took a noticeable dive. It hasn't really made a comeback ever since. Hopefully though, for future success of Hoi 4, and pray to the YouTube algorithm gods for this one, that we get back to the good old 2 mil views on a randomized P video. Like, we need to get back to that. Also, Feedback Gaming jumped into relevancy after changing up his content strategy guides over let's plays yeah, i mean look at this catalog though La resistance was a long awaited dlc because it had spies this dlc made capitulating the soviets and the chinese not a death sentence it also made france kind of fun but it really made spain the worst nation in the world but the portuguese focus tree is probably the best minor focus tree in the game and it probably made one of the greatest achievement runs in history there is no way macau my day can be beat out by another iconic achievement on the multiplayer scene though the romanians had purpose again to get the fighter too before anyone else just to get it stolen by germany the update also allowed you to zoom in in the focus tree tab despite all these amazing changes it failed to bring hype back into the hoi4 community the hoi4 youtube category was still noticeably declining as content ideas ran out and as mod creators became less and less innovative hoi4 needed something big to happen battle for the bosphorus was released on the 15th of october 2020 and a holy shit paradox you can't just make a focus tree for three nations and release it as an expansion i paid ten dollars for this and i still want my money back this was a paid update it took them eight months to produce this terrible expansion it's not, this is not like on the same level as death or dishonor or together for victory. The most impact that any of these nations have is Turkey getting its war justification debuff, and it takes an extra year to justify on them. However, YouTube Hoi4 would see a change come, a very painful one. The first episode of Hoi4 A to Z was released on February 6, 2021, and ISP was off to his mental psych ward when he came up with this idea. Sadly though, this series seriously failed to increase the viewership in the Hoi4 community as it was still flatlining and the Hoi4 devs needed something big if they were gonna save it. No Step Back was released on November 23rd, 2021, and Hoi4 made a serious effort to promote it. This was one of the first major content updates in ages, and it made everything better. Now you can purge your entire officer core as Stalin, or actually half a fighting chance against Germany as Poland. You gained a whole extra research slot because now you don't even have to research doctrine. You just unlock them with army XP. You can design tanks to go 75 miles per hour or four miles per hour and be a moving fort. You can produce so many Gustav guns that you can walk through the Maginot line. Supply actually makes sense now and it will decide the fate of your entire campaign into a country if you are undersupplied. Command power finally had a purpose and everyone was thrilled. Boy, popularity took a jump and actually stayed there for a while. Although many of these changes sound amazing, there was many unbalanced things to come with it, thus making the change logs the worst thing I've ever seen. There was 11 little tiny updates. 11. The transport planes effectively removed the need for any trains needed for supply. You can be completely encircled and still get supply by plane. Next, it was tanks being ass cheeks and getting destroyed by any air superiority. And this has still not been fixed. Then it was naval production being endless. You could get thousands of Yamatos out in just a month. Then it was tanks being able to be converted from two tanks into a hundred tanks just by clicking a button. Stuff like this 
actually did good for the YouTube community, but not the game itself. Everyone loves exploits that you can abuse for single player or even multiplayer. I'm sure that's why we still see the search volume of Hoi4 where it is today. Soon, 1.12 and its DLC by Blood alone will come out, turning the joke of Italy's focus tree into a very messy one, I'm sure of it, and Switzerland and Ethiopia will get a focus tree, and I'm sure those two will get some really overpowered buffs, but also airplanes can be designed, and I'm sure those will become useless, and we will all just go back to 50 with artillery only divisions. <laughs> I don't want to end this video on a bad note, because Hoi4 is the game I know life the most, and I really love this game. Anyways, thank you for watching, uh, leave a like if you enjoyed, I also want to put this in here, I do stream on Twitch bro, go follow me, we're not having a good time over there, we're not having a great time over there, we're having a grand time over there okay go follow and comment down below your favorite your favorite hoi for youtuber okay i'm trying to start some beef up in here okay